Hello, I am so glad you're here for a story from the Big Picture Story Bible. Remember, this book shows us how the Bible is all one story. It's the story of how much God loves us, that He loves us so much He sent His Son to be our rescuer. So, I want you to get your book, get it ready so you can follow along, and then at the end of the story that you hear today, you're going to have a fun activity that you can do at home. Part 6. God's People Become Great Jacob moved his growing household to Egypt. Bags were packed, camels and donkeys were loaded with things, and everyone started out. First came Jacob, the son of Isaac, the grandson of Abraham. Next came Jacob's sons, and then came all their families. Seventy people moved to Egypt. By now, God's promise of a great people was really growing. And God's promise kept growing long after Jacob and his sons died. After 400 years in Egypt, God's people had grown into a great nation named Israel. In fact, Israel had so many people that the land was filled with them. Do you think the Egyptians liked having all these people in their land? Pharaoh, the king of the land, hated the people of Israel. Pharaoh hated Israel's God, too. So he treated God's people like slaves. He made them work, work, work. He was so evil that he even killed some of God's people. God's people were in trouble. They cried out to God for help, and God heard them. Do you see the little baby boy? He was God's answer to the people's cry for help. His name was Moses, and one day he would rescue God's people. When Moses grew up, God spoke to him. Moses listened to God, and then Moses did what God told him to do. He went to Pharaoh and said God's words, Let my people go. But the king said no. He did not listen to God. Moses told Pharaoh that if he disobeyed God's word, terrible things would happen to the Egyptians. Did that make the king decide to listen to God? No. Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. So, God made the river turn to blood. The entire land swarmed with frogs and dust turned into gnats. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. So God made the houses full of flies. The animals of Egypt got sick and died, and the people got painful sores. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. So God made hail fall from the sky. Locusts covered the ground, and darkness spread out over the land. But Pharaoh still refused to let God's people go. Can you imagine what it would take for Pharaoh to let God's people go? Today you learned about nine plagues.
nine terrible things that happened to the Egyptians because Pharaoh didn't listen to Moses and didn't let God's people go. Your activity for today is to find a way to act out each of these nine plagues. And so the first thing you need to do is walk around your home with your family and find things that remind you of each of these plagues. So I'm going to show you some things that I found in my home, and I'm going to tell you how we're going to use them with my family to act out each of these plagues. So the first thing I found was some red food coloring. We're going to fill up the bathtub with water, drop in some red food coloring, and talk about how water turned to blood. I found some froggy toys to act out the plague of the frogs. I didn't find anything to remind me of gnats, and so for that one, we're just going to pretend. We're going to bat the air like this and pretend like there's gnats all over, and I may even play some sounds from my phone while we're pretending. For the plague of sores, we're going to put some band-aids all over us and pretend like we have sores. And for hail, I have some ice for my freezer. So these are just some ideas to get you started. Work together as a family to come up with a way to act out each of these nine plagues. And so I bet working together, you can find a way to act out each of them. So have some fun and let us know what you come up with. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Psalm 103.